welcome. My name is Prue or Prue LaRue and today we've got three looks one palette with the Glamanatrix Sandra Rose palette. It has been a little while since I've done a three looks one palette but I have been so excited to have this palette in my collection and I'm excited to play with it so hey here we go. I'll take you through the looks and at the end let's talk a little bit about this palette. Hello it's voiceover Prue. So we are going in with the shade Leaf and I'm just making that into a little triangle on the outer edge of my eye and then blending it through. I like to do this and then bring it up and around. It gives me like, a, it's like a cheat way of having a neat outer corner. Sometimes it works. Unfortunately, this is one of the shades I sort of had just a little bit of trouble with building it up. You can see, there's no lying to you guys. And then I'm gonna go into Posy and I'm gonna thread this, I'm gonna thread. I'm gonna put this all through my crease. I just love this shade. Like guys, have a look at this pigmentation. But I'm just putting it through my crease and blending it in and towards that leaf shade. Then we're going into Vine and I'm gonna place this on my inner corner and blend it through and up to into Posy. Then we are going back to leaf and I'm gonna put this underneath my eye and just blend it through. Pretty exciting stuff. And then I'm just going to dab this back on and put leaf up. It built up really nicely. Then using Flourish, which is a beautiful, like, oh my God, look at that shimmer. It is stunning. I did not need to wet this or anything. It just goes on beautifully like that. I'm just chilled to trying to make it a bit neater and tidying it up. And then I've finished. Look, I've got my CoverGirl clump. Crusher mascara on. I've used the Urban Decay liner in Freak. And I even did some liner for you guys with the Fenty Fly Liner. I've put on my ColourPop Moonchild gloss. I'm not sure why I'm showing you guys, but hey, this is <laughs> it's a bit behind the scenes. And here is the final look. I'm kind of into this. I like it. What do you reckon? Uh, I was having a bit of trouble with Urban Decay liner. I can't lie. It just, I don't know, it didn't like me today. Usually it does so well. Anyway, I am just obsessed with that flower shade. This wore beautifully. It's beautiful. And for this one, I have remembered to put powder down uh, to catch any fallout. And we went a bit heavy on the blush, didn't we? I don't know. It's fun. So I'm going to use Nectar, which is our purple. And I'm going to do the same effect on the outer thing. I've used the NYX Milk Jumbo Eye Pencil on my eye. I see so many people using this and I wanted to give it a whirl. So I'm put, I've am put. i changed over brushes and I'm using a bit more of like, it's not a natural hairbrush, but it feels more like a natural hairbrush. And I'm dabbing on the shade and then building up like that. This just showed that working really well. And then I'm going into Petal, which is one of our more neutral shades in this palette. But look at that bang. Of pigmentation like did you see that coming and I don't know I didn't see it coming because we're doing a pink purple look which I feel like is what I almost should be known for if anything and then we're going in on the inner corner this is where I got a bit messy and then I had a lot of a bit of a hard time fixing it up uh, so I think I've changed to showing you the eye I like better maybe then I've got the NYX glitter primer and I'm using that to just hold on to this shimmer shade and give it a bit more extra bang. Uh, Betty Jean uses NYX primer all the time, so I was curious to give it a whirl. And I'm going in with that shade Sandra, and it's stunning. Look at that shimmer. It's just that part of my inner corner on my right one. Do you guys know how I could go about fixing that? Because I just got a bit too hard for my brain. But when you look at the one that's left, like left to you guys, it's, it's just neat. I like it. And then I'm going with Jasmine, which is a beautiful little inner corner highlight shade. I'm putting it there. Then using Bud, and we are going to put this underneath my eye. These shades really had a lot more bang than I thought they did. And it's really worthwhile checking out some swatches. My friend Cher Jonathan did a beautiful swatches on her channel, and I've got it linked down below. For the final part of this look, I've used the NYX. Faux white liner in vanilla on my waterline and Benefit Bad Girl Bang. And here is the look up close. Mm -mm. I love that shimmer. It's so pretty. And here is the eye that I sort of like a bit better. We were like a bit patchy with the purple on the outer corner. 
so I decided to give it a whirl at fixing it. So I'm just going to dab on some more purple here. And you can see that it really builds up nicely like this. Sometimes when you add another shade, it doesn't want to blend into it. And this did it beautifully. Then I am showing you the completed sort of effect. I don't know. I could have done a bit more fixing up on one of those eyes, but it's nice. It's not bad. And we are on to look three. Here is our final look. I've gone in with the NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. And we're just going to quickly blend that out. I thought, why not? I'll show you this step for once. <laughs> That's a bit of extra fun. So I'm going straight in with Seed, which is our brown shade. And I'm going to line up from the bottom of my eye and bring up that triangle and bring it in. I'm feeling like I need to start doing a different technique for you guys, hey? Or for myself. I don't know. It's just, it's so foolproof. It really is. <laughs> um, then I'm going in with Leaf. And this is a shade I wanted to spend a bit more time with. It just, I don't know, I wasn't sold on it when I put it in the outer corner. But now, blending it out, it behaved a lot differently and I really liked it. I always sort of get that bit of patterning in the inner part of my eye. It's just loose, loose skin. So gross, I know. And we're going in with Vine. Try and just blend that part out a bit more and sort of get rid of those lines. And then I've just gone in with a bit of a bigger brush to sort of blend it all together and mesh it into each other. Then I'm going back to leaf, and this is where I really wanted to give that color a bit more go. And this pigmentation on the, the lid is amazing. Look at how beautifully it pats down and blends out. I don't know, this palette could do some amazing things with some all matte eye looks. I'm kind of excited to play with it a bit more and do these looks, especially looking at now. Then I am going in with some glitter primer from NYX again, and I'm going to try and do like a halo eye effect. We're going in with with flora and I'm just putting this on the sort of inner part of my eye I really wanted to do a halo eye look and I thought this was like a fun way of doing that and man you just can't deny the shimmers in this palette are stunning so we're just patting it down and then we're going in again with leaf I just can't get enough of that shade <laughs> and we're just putting that underneath my eye sort of tied in with the top or like what's on my lid and blending it through then going in with flora again and I'm gonna try and do that so the teardrop effect I don't know what it's called do you guys know can you tell me then I'm using botanical and I'm putting that on my inner corner very pretty back to seed and I'm just gonna tap 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 and build up this part of my outer eye again now we're finished so I've put the nails climax mascara on I've got the Colourpop volumizing mascara in brown on my lower lashes because I thought I'd try it out then I've got Colourpop liner in crybaby on my waterline and the Fenty fly liner and here is the look I wasn't too sure on it so I decided <laughs> to go in <laughs> and put more leaf on because you can't get enough of that shade and I just wanted to blow it out a little bit more so you could really see that pop underneath my eye so this is me just doing exactly that so we're building that out. I think it kind of got the effect I was looking for. Again with Flora, we're just doing that little dot underneath the eye. And finishing up, this is our final look. I'm sorry, the white balance fixes in a second. Here we are. There it is. All right, the three looks have happened. So you might be surprised. So I have a first impressions of this palette up already and you might be surprised I didn't use the shade Bloom, which is stunning and I was really excited to use it. It's a very sort of flaky formula, as you can sort of see from that swatch there. I don't know if you can see the flakes. So to me, you just need to be a little bit more prepared than I felt in like any of the looks I've done lately <laughs> to wear it. Um, but ultimately the look I've used flourish in is a very is a kind of a similar flaky formula and I don't think I hadn't used any glitter primer and it, it sort of ended up hurting my eyes a little bit that happens to me a lot with different eyeshadows it's nothing new it's probably something I just don't really talk about that much though but when it's that high pigment shimmer sometimes they hurt and I was worried that bloom was going to be quite similar and yeah I probably will use it later and I think it is stunning still but let's have a look, a uh, little talk. Let me go to my list. 
of palette things. So the Sandra Rose palette is from a lovely local lady in Queensland to me. Um, and it goes for $75 Australian. Make sure to go show some love on Instagram to let her know that you want this palette to come back. I think she's going to do sort of continual pre-orders. They're handmade, so it's just like a little bit extra special when you get it. And it's worth the wait, that's for sure. But let's talk about my thoughts. It is hard because these are handmade eyeshadows. And realistically, of handmade eyeshadows, they're just a little bit different. And the only other ones I have in my collection that is in a palette is the... Cleon, Cleon, I can't even see. Oh no! A little chunk fell out. Oh, bloody hell. Alright, I'm learning that you can't keep handmade eyeshadows this direction. They must all be flat. So, I don't know what I'm going to do. But the only other palette I have to sort of compare it to that, and I feel like it's unfair because they are, they're their own special thing. But, I mean, they're both amazing. But what I would say, so handmade eyeshadows, and as soon as you see that, the first things you should th sh should think, uh, there's going to be fallout. And to have a light hand, but there's also going to be some amazing pigmentation. I definitely regret not putting powder down for like all of my looks, because I did have a little bit of fallout, but I think it's fine. You can't really tell. But there is like a tiny bit of green pigment underneath my eye, but I'm not that bothered by it. And it's my own fault, because I knew. I knew. So blendability, these all blended really well. The trouble shades I did have, unfortunately, sort of were Nectar, Seed, and Leaf, which are all of our dark greens. And you saw me sort of fix them. And to fix them was just to blend them out and then pat it on and build it back up. That's nothing too new. Uh, I find sometimes just when you blend something out, it sort of lightens up a little bit sometimes. And it, what's important to me is that you can fix it that you can blend it back up and pat it back on. And all of these shadows did that really well. So I was really impressed. The pigmentation on these shadows is amazing. And this is just such a unique palette story. I don't think I have anything even close to this. It's amazing. My beautiful friend Annette's Makeup Corner helps collaborate design this palette. And I think you can really, I think it's Kayla at Glamonatrix and Annette, their love of color coming through. For me, the standout shades Flourish is there, and Sandra, these are beautiful, but Vine and Posy. I don't think I have anything like these two shades anywhere, and these are blended out beautifully. They're stunning. I think I use them in most of my looks because I just, I oh know, they're just beautiful. The, uh, like, these three up here, like, they're happy. They're fine. What? I don't know. Like, I'm just not really into neutrals. <laughs> so it's hard. But Vine and Posy, oh my god, these are so unique and beautiful. The shimmers in this palette are stunning. I've seen a few like thumbnails around. I have stopped watching videos with reviews of palettes that I'm about to do because I don't want like their minds in. So I'm so excited to finish now and then I can go watch some more videos on this beautiful palette and see what everyone is saying. The shimmers in this palette are stunning, and that's sort of what I expected from Glamonatrix. They have such a beautiful shimmer formula. I would probably recommend using a glitter primer with definitely Flourish and Bloom, and then sort of testing it out with the other ones, just to hold it in place on your eye and powdering underneath your eye, just for that fallout. But when you're dealing with such beautiful shades, it is so worth the fallout. Uh, affordability, this is a $75 trend, that's about 50 US dollars. So that's pretty awesome, I think. For what is six? 15 shades of some unique color story. It's handmade. It's special. I think it's totally reasonable. And this brand is cruelty free and vegan. The packaging is beautiful. I love this outer design with the Sandra Rosenberg and Glaminatrix on it. And it's got these beautiful flowers all over it. I know she's got a empty palette coming out soon. I think I'm probably going to end up having to order it because I, I do need some more empty like palettes. The mirror in here is beautiful. It's high quality and I used it for all of my looks with no worries. Sometimes I have to use mirrors from other palettes just because they're easier to deal with. But this mirror is fantastic. And the wear time in all of these has been amazing. I've been mixing up my primers, but they have all looked stunning no matter the primer. And ultimately, do I recommend this palette? Yes, I do. I think this palette is beautiful for an, like a, something really unique 
and special in your collection. You also can use it for everyday looks, creating like a really nice romantic look here. Bud is a beautiful shade. Just, I don't know, man, like these shimmers, they're just stunning. But it's so unique. It's not something that I've seen around. I just, I really, I mean, I don't want you to think that I'm like, I just want to be honest with you guys. And that's why I mentioned the stuff like Fallout, Glitter Primer. But that's still stuff that I sort of think when it comes to a handmade eyeshadow is something that is worth mentioning if this is your first foray into handmade eyeshadows. Ultimately, I think this palette is unique, beautiful, and it's something really special. So yes, I think you should I think you should go annoy the Glaminatrix owner and get her started on a new pre-order for you guys. So you guys can try this out and see what you think. Because it, it is something really special. And I feel like as someone who owns like at least 90 eyeshadow palettes. That's like, I mean, like, this is special. Um, and that's all I gotta say about it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your favorite look was that I did. And yeah, I absolutely appreciate and adore you. Mwah.